Good evening everyone, time for another member update. Now we're going to spend some time on this chart here. This is the gold spot price in Canadian dollars. And this is a really important chart here. Now the first thing I want to point out to you is the beginning of the bull market in gold in Canadian dollars is back around here around 400. It's going to be about 15 years ago and you do the math uh, 15 years ago from 400 to 1600 we're just doing rough figures uh, the last video I released publicly people just absolutely went crazy about how my figures weren't, weren't correct these are just round numbers so that's a 400 percent increase over 15 years that comes to about 10 percent per year that's what gold has returned for Canadians now cover I've covered the stories about food prices in Canada Canada is kind of a microcosm for the U.S. Now, I don't think that uh, what what has happened in Canada is going to happen in the U.S. Uh, to the same extent, at least in regards to food, because America grows so much food. Um, so, but the prices for electronics and things like that that's going to it's going to go through the roof when the dollar finally does go. Uh, other things that are really important on this chart, the big takeaway from this more than anything, is you can see that this bull market in gold, it never ended. Um, it, it's, a, it's a bull market. And you can see the touch points that I drew here, the beginning of the bull market, you can actually draw it from here, but that puts, puts it like at a slope like that. But if you draw it from here, you can see with this touch point and this touch point, you can see we meet up again there um, in uh, 2014 and 2015. And uh, I don't know what the percentage is off from the highs. The highs is 1,900 in Canadian dollars and we're around 1,600. Um, but it's a 10% per year return. That's phenomenal. That's better than the pension funds assumed returns. It's better than the stock market. It's better than anything. Um, and then the other thing to look at here, a couple of other things. One is the MACD. Now this is really big. You can see that just crossing over into the positive. You can see the MACD is at 14.05. It's trading right now. And uh, the last time the MACD crossed over from negative territory into positive territory in the Canadian dollar gold chart was all the way back in 2001, right when that bull market began. So that crossover resulted in a 400% return. Uh, could this result in a 400% return? It could result in much, much more than that. Now, the other thing on this chart that is absolutely staggering is this volume. Look at this increase in volume. Um, look at just this month and uh, you can see that there is a tremendous amount of money coming into this Canadian gold uh, contract whatever this is pulled from you can see uh, compared to um, what we had here with this rally it's absolutely nothing this this is a huge um, rally formation now let's look at a couple of others here uh, we can take a look at the gold price in the Japanese yen. That one uh, has crossed into the positive all the way back here, but uh, unfortunately we don't have the years to go back. You can see we do have that 2009 bottom, so uh, it's doubled from that point. Um, and let's uh, take a look at the Australian dollar. Unfortunately, we don't have a lot of charts here uh, on NetDania. But if we do gold in the Australian dollar, uh, you can see here that it's, uh, again, we don't have that, men that many years, but you can see from a price of 900 to where we are, about 1600 uh, off from the highs there. But still, a bull market, definitely a bull market in gold continues, something like that. Um, so the gold bull market never ended. The only thing that people are deceived about is the dollar gold bull. Uh, but you can see uh, if we draw from the very lows that we get something like this trend line. And yes, it could correct back to 800, but more, like, more than likely 
uh, we're talking about this trend line right here and this the, we're very close to the bottom you can see we're above uh, 1100 now on the silver chart uh, we're nowhere near that zero line crossover we're in sharp negative territory but I want you to see though that we are in a positive crossover and uh, that positive crossover is something that we had a fake out for back here we had it legit there and that's where it stayed so it actually has crossed over to the positive again uh, we're at about 1443 uh, an unbelievably cheap price for silver so the bull market in the metals never ended uh, we certainly don't have 10 percent per year return in um, silver but uh, from about four dollars to fourteen dollars um, it's still about maybe a five or six percent return per year for 50, 15 years since the bull market began so let's look at a couple of stories here I want to take you first to the Bitcoin exchanges now there's a lot of uh, a lot of changes going on uh, since Cripsy went down and uh, it looks like uh, Big Vern, uh, Paul Vernon is on the lam. Maybe he's in China. We don't know where he's at. And as I posted to the message board thread talking about uh, Cripsy and what's going on, uh, I certainly don't envy him. I would, it doesn't matter how many millions you, you skipped away with. Um, if you have to look over your shoulder for the rest of your life, and you have to remember these people who are in the cryptocurrencies a lot of them are on the dark web there's some very shady characters and uh, there's people who can put hits on you so that would not be something i would want to do in fact if i were paul vernon honestly uh and uh big Vern, and had hidden all that stuff and and fleece people for millions of dollars i'd probably go to the fbi office in washington and i'd turn myself in and ask them to prosecute me and uh, just you know get things done and, and put the thing into receivership and get as much paid back as possible because you know what's worth losing your life over um, really nothing but looking at these exchanges you can see that there's big changes have happened now Cripsy and Bittrex and Poloniex used to trade around three four five hundred thousand dollars worth of cryptocurrencies uh, in a 24-hour period again this is 24-hour volume you can see here that Poloniex now is up at seven million dollars um, so that's a um, nearly a 20-fold increase um, Bittrex is 800,000 that's you know maybe a 400 percent increase we have some new exchanges coming on here here's this Yuan Bao Hui and this just came on recently you can see uh, four million dollars in dogecoin uh, the moves in some of these alternative cryptocurrencies have been huge you can see here dogecoin uh, an explosion in the price of dogecoin and we've got a lot of these alternative cryptocurrencies exploding uh, i covered before ethereum but you can see here ethereum uh, coming in with a market cap now still uh, almost 200 million dollars uh, and you have to remember these all serve basically the same purpose the purpose being people having the ability to send money to anyone anyone sending money to anyone else uh, in seconds anywhere in the world and uh, this just isn't going to go away it doesn't really matter whether Bitcoin goes away and Bitcoin is starting to fade now on its most recent rally but uh, the alternative cryptocurrencies have really exploded so we're going to keep a close eye on that and see what happens now i wanted to take you over to uh, this latest article about the national debt now i've covered the national debt for the longest time and i've told you uh, you know what i do i go to debt to the penny site and i take today's date and i'm not going to do it right now it's around I think we're around 19 trillion I take today's date I go back exactly one year and then I measure the difference between one year ago and today that's a rolling deficit figure and it's anywhere from 800 billion to 1 trillion it's been steadily that and so uh, we had Obama come out and give his speech uh, about how everything's great and then now we start to get these articles and you can see here US national debt is to reach 30 trillion dollars in 10 years 
The U.S. government will owe $30 trillion in national debt within a decade if the country's budget deficit continues to grow at the same rate and current tax laws remain in place, according to new federal report. The federal deficit will increase in 2016 for the first time since the end of the financial crisis. Now, that's an outright lie. Um, what they're doing there, and I've covered this before, is they're talking about the deficit as a percentage of GDP. So they're right there cooking the books. Uh, none of that is real. Uh, the deficit has gone up uh, $800 billion a year for the last, for every year of Obama's presidency. We know it was about $10 billion when he got into office and now we're about $20 billion. So he's basically doubled the national debt. And that's what Bush did before him. And so it just goes on and on. But they're lying to you when they tell you that uh, 2016 will be the first increase. The CBO, a federal agency within the legislative branch of the U.S. government that provides budget and economic information to Congress, government budget deficits will continue to rise over the next 10 years, topping $1 trillion again in 2022 and reaching $1.4 trillion in 2026, CBO analysts said. The accumulation of those deficits will deepen the gross public debt from $18 trillion at the end of 2015 to 29 trillion in 2026. Now we know that we're around 19 trillion, so I don't know where they're getting that figure. Um, but uh, so it, it's uh, very interesting the way they come out, and it's not surprising that we had Obama come out and give his basically, really honestly, just a, a speech of lies. And then as soon as that's done, they because he's a liar, he's hired to lie. That's what he does. And that's his job, is to lie. So he comes out and lies about what's going on, and then uh, they come out and break the real news that the debt's going to be $30 trillion. Now, let's look at this chart here. This was one that was covered uh, on Bill Holter, his most recent JS Mindset post. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the most accurate one, but this is a, a graphic that... Uh, that Holter referenced, and uh, this is a really interesting one. So let's look at this one, and as Holter said, we want to look at what has happened since the last recession. So you can see here, look, looking at the first chart, you can see the gray areas are going to be recessions. So one of the things that you notice in most uh, Federal Reserve database uh, charts is that uh, things change during a recession. Usually, um, a bad trends increase and good trends decrease, but then they, uh, as the recession ends, then they change course. Well, that's no longer the case with any of this stuff. So uh, you can see here that with student loans, we went into the recession and they absolutely skyrocketed. And as we came out of the recession, they accelerated to the upside. So the amount of money owed on student loans is absolutely through the roof. I've already covered the topic. Um, the, the answer to soaring college costs, of course, is to stop loaning the money and then they won't, there won't be any demand for those um, courses and they'll have to drop the price. So the, the free market answer is very, very simple. You just simply stop giving people money to go to college. But they'll never do that because they're Keynesians and uh, they're lunatics. Now, here's the food stamps. You can see that uh, it was accelerating rapidly going into the recession and it's just going straight up, uh, has continued. It's kind of stalling a little bit, so it's not in a parabolic rise now, but it's still uh, a very, very bad trend. There's the federal debt. We already talked about that. It's still rising. Of course, uh, that's all a result of this money printing, and you can see that the Federal Reserve started printing money in the middle of the recession and has continued to this day. The uh, interest rate on the bonds have not risen. Uh, they're still doing QE or stealth QE. Here's health insurance costs. I really strongly doubt whether that's accurate. Uh, here's the labor force participation rate. We've talked about that. You can see it ticked up the beginning of uh, the recession, then it went down. It's continued down. It's a very, very ugly chart. This one is workers' share of the economy, and you can see that it has continuously fallen uh, for quite some time, and uh, it looks like it wants to go into new lows, uh, probably definitely in the next recession. Median family income dropped through the recession, continued down, and is still on a downward path. 
and then we have home ownership to round it out. So uh, interesting charts. Uh, they definitely give lie to the Obama belief and uh, speech that things are recovering. Things are not recovering. Uh, the best anyone could say is that there was kind of a stall in the decline, uh, sort of like there was a stall in the bull market for gold uh, and silver, but uh, it really is just kind of a, a, a holding pattern until things resume. And uh, we know what the course is for things. As soon as the system begins to crumble, we're gonna come up to this zero line. We're probably gonna get, we've heard anywhere from $5,000 an ounce gold to $50,000 an ounce gold. Um, we know that silver is going to follow suit uh, initially slowly and then later uh, much more rapidly. And uh, if we get a $5,000 an ounce gold price, uh, then silver will probably revert to the mean and over over correct to 10 to 1. So we're going to be talking about $500 an ounce silver. If we get a $50,000 gold price, then at some, price, uh, some point, we're probably going to see that $5,000 an ounce silver price. Um, but uh, that remains to be seen what's going to happen going forward. And we'll talk to you next time.